and I like Alison. I like her too. You're right there, Kate. Yeah, it was my volume. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm just muting everyone now. So yes, settle down onto your backs and you can lie however you like and maybe just have a couple of big <sighs> sighing breaths. Let the weight of your body settle down onto the ground. And yeah, so let, let me, I think if I start with this reading, which is the Casper the Cat has um, <laughs> appropriated my yoga mat. So some of you may know this because it's, a, it's a, one of my favourite quotes. It's from the Tao Te Ching, the best to be like water. So we'll just have the beginning of it to start with. So Alison, lying down on your back when you've, you've connected and we've got this theme of water. So you can just maybe feel before I read these few lines, maybe just lie on your back. You can bring your hands onto the front of your body if you like, and you can feel the flow of your breath through your body. Feeling the breath come in, feeling the breath leaving you. And today with this, this focus on, on water, we're just trying to, I suppose, connect with this idea of flow, the flow of our breath and moving in a fluid way, but also we'll be um, thinking about still water as well. So best to be like water, which benefits the 10,000 things and does not contend. So B and Donna, we're starting lying down. And I was just giving a little reading to start with. So lying on your backs, best to be like water, which benefits the 10,000 things and does not contend. It pulls where humans disdain to dwell close to the Tao. So maybe what we can take from this in these first movements we're going to do is it's a sense of moving with fluidity and this does not contend. So we're, we're just really being easy with ourselves, um, not contending, not fighting with ourselves. And the first movement you're going to do is going to be very familiar, just bending your knees, standing your feet on the floor and letting your knees tilt to the right and to the left. And when I was doing this yesterday, I was just staying with it for a bit longer than I normally would. And yeah, keeping the movement easy, keeping the movement comfortable. So keeping, I suppose if we're thinking about not contending with ourselves, it's about keeping within a comfortable range of movement. So knees tilting to the right and to the left and just sort of keep repeating the movement, maybe for longer than we would sometimes do. So we come into a bit of a rhythm, perhaps that sort of sense of flow. So two or three more times, letting the knees tilt to the right and to the left. And still feeling the movement of your breath through your body. And then you're going to pause in the middle and you're going to fold your knees into your chest. And you can hug around your knees for a moment if you like. But then what I'd like you to do is bring your elbows onto the floor, fairly close to the sides of your body and keep your hands either side of your knees. So then you're going to do a little bit of rocking of your knees into one hand and then the other. So you've got bent elbows, your elbows are on the floor your forearms are not on the floor and you're rocking your knees into one hand and into the other. And again, you can keep this movement um, in a range of movement that feels comfortable for you. Repetition, maybe a bit more than we might do sometimes. Just going from side to side rocking so that's it just a few more times and just seeing how it feels across the back of the body 
And whenever you've had enough of rocking, you can take your legs up to the ceiling, give your legs a bit of a shake out. And you can then fold your knees into your chest again. And we're going to roll onto one side and we're going to do one of those twisting movements from our side, but actually with slightly differently than we've done. So first of all, roll onto your side and just see, are you comfortable with the side of your head on the floor or do you want to cushion under the side of your head? And you're going to bring your arms out on the floor in front of you at shoulder height. And we're actually going to be taking the top arm up towards the ceiling and back a bit. But I want you to try and keep this top arm really fluid. So often we think about the head rolling, but today you're using your top arm. But try and keep the arm fluid. Obviously, let your top knee slide on your bottom leg or even lift towards the ceiling. So you could be taking your arm all the way towards the floor behind you, but you're trying to keep this sense of fluidity, that's it, in the movements. Good. So if it starts to feel that it's pulling your shoulder, that's very nice. Just think about how could I make this arm movement more fluid, more flowing, that's it. Very nice. So this sort of thing about best to be like water. Beautiful. And obviously you're letting your head roll on the floor. That's really nice. So the whole of the body is responding to the movement of the arm. And then it might be quite nice to see, is it possible to let that arm come all the way onto the floor behind you? Can it rest there? And it might be to let your arm rest on the floor. Your top knee needs to come away from the bottom. Like if you do have a cushion under your head, you could always pop that cushion between your knees. That's it, Sheila. Or you can pop it under your head. <laughs> so, but yes, if you're lying with both arms on the floor, you may feel you don't need a cushion under your head. Good. That's very nice. And just come back to feeling the flow of your breath in your body for a couple of cycles of breath. Very nice. And then from here, when you're resting with your arms on the floor like this, it's quite easy to come back onto your back if you just keep lifting that top knee towards the ceiling. That's it. And then the back of your pelvis will come onto the floor. Good. So you can come back onto your back and you can fold your knees back in towards your chest. And we'll move on to the second side and we'll do that same sort of twisting movement on side two when you're ready. So come down and settle on your second side. And so again, I think you all did this when you're settling on your side, you've got your knees bent at a right angle to your body and you're sort of sliding your feet forwards a bit. So you feel very steady on your side. And then again, using your top arm in this sort of fluid, sweeping, flowing movement, taking the arm up and over. And you may to start with, I certainly don't go all the way to the floor. It really depends how your shoulder's feeling. That's nice. How your upper back is feeling. And remember that, you, that you're letting that top knee help you. So that top knee can lift or the top knee can slide on the bottom thigh to help this movement of the arm be sort of fluid and yeah, <laughs> flowing. Very nice and enjoyable. Good. Good. And then, yes, if you like, you can stay with both arms. So can you come to a place where that top arm can come all the way towards the floor behind you? It might be lifting. And you can rest the arm on the floor and you can let the breath come in. You can let the breath leave you. Good. And then from here, once more, come onto your back again by just bringing your top knee up towards the ceiling more so that you roll back onto the back of your pelvis. And for a moment, lie with your legs long on your back. You could lengthen your legs out on the ground. You could give them a little roll or a little bounce. Let a breath come in, let a breath leave you. And then just one more movement on our back, bending our knees, standing the feet on the floor, crossing your arms over your chest. 
That's it, crossing your arms over your chest and then coming to rock from side to side. So letting your elbows and your knees and your head all rock to the right and to the left. So again, we're sort of looking for this, just, I suppose, easy, comfortable movement, looking for some feeling, you know, finding a bit of a rhythm as you rock your weight towards the left side of your body and towards the right side of your body. And eventually you're going to rock all the way onto one side and you're going to have a few breaths on your side. And when you've, and you don't have to keep your arms crossed, you can just do whatever you like with your arms. And then from there, we're going to come onto hands and knees. And with, I think, yeah, just come onto hands and knees. And maybe just a few, a few cycles of cat. We're going to be doing a bit more of this in a sequence later. So I think just a few cycles of cat and We'll come into child pose and we'll, then we'll do a couple of dogs. So just a few cycles of cat and see how it feels to be on hands and knees. And obviously in cat, we're looking for this feeling of the spine flowing. <laughs> but when we first come into cat, it may feel a bit less, um, a bit less flowy, a bit more, you know, that we're encountering tightness tension, the movement may feel a bit more clunky. So rounding your back to the ceiling, dipping your spine to the floor. And letting your breath flow in and out as it wants to. Now from your rounded up cat, you can rock your hips back over your heels and just have a breath or two in child pose or kneeling if you prefer, really mainly to help you settle in this orientation. So in this orientation where we're in kneeling or child pose, having a couple of breaths, letting the breath flow in, letting the breath move us. And then in your own time, you're going to do a couple of dog poses. The second dog pose will take up into standing. So after the first dog, you can come back into child or kneeling for a moment. So we'll just do a couple of dog poses and see how they feel. And then again, we'll come back to dog in a bit of a sequence shortly. So from being on hands and knees, you can tuck your toes under, you can rock your hips back over your heels, you can see how does your body feel when you arrive in dog. So as we all know, probably what we feel to begin with is all the sort of tight places. So it could be the back of the legs, the lower back, the upper back, the wrists. So maybe using some of those bigger side breaths to help begin that process of easing out tension in dog. And we can, of course, be bending one knee, bending the other trying to feel that our hand prints are really big on the floor. When you've had some time in this first dog, you might like to come down and just before you do another dog, I was saying child pose, but you could sit back over your heels and maybe give your hands a shake out and even bring the backs of your hands together. And then this time when we come into dog, we'll take dog into a forward bend and up into standing. So when you're ready, coming back onto hands and knees, big, big handprints on the floor, tucking your toes under, rocking your hips up and back in dog. And I was just thinking back then to the quote that we had from the Tao Te Ching and this idea of not contending, of being like water. And Again, in dog pose, not getting into a battle with ourselves if things are feeling tight. So it means bending the knees, finding ways that we can settle and ease in dog. And from this second dog pose, whenever you've been here long enough, 
whenever you're ready to move on. Then you can start to walk your hands in towards your feet. And we'll end up in a forward bend. When you end up in your forward bend, you might like to have your elbows resting on your thighs. You might just like to let your body tumble forwards, your arms and your head. And just fine. Have a breath or two in your forward bend, and then you can roll up into standing. And when first of all you arrive in standing, it's, it does. It seems to be. I hope everyone's. It, it seems to be a bit sort of glitchy. Um, as my oldest daughter always says, um, Zoom. So I, it makes people are freezing and then I'm freezing. But hopefully you're still able to keep following. So when you arrive in standing, what I'd like you to do first of all is just settle in standing. So you can have a look at your feet, have your feet a little distance apart, and then. Stop looking at your feet and bring one hand onto your belly and one hand onto your chest. So we can just take a moment in standing to settle. We could close our eyes, which might feel easier as we're on our own. Close our eyes and maybe feel, we might feel our body responding to our breathing. We might not. Just how is it to settle in standing, to feel the feet on the floor? You could sway a little bit from side to side if that's helpful. So I think sometimes if we're being still in a movement and that's not enough to hold our attention, a little bit of movement, a little bit of swaying, feeling the shifting weight through the soles of your feet might help you be a little bit more present here. And then we're going to do something which I'm not sure we've done it on the, we have done the Zoom for, for a while, but I did this yesterday and it suddenly really, really cheered me up. So um, we're going to start this one when we start drumming our fingers on our head. So sort of tapping and drumming your fingers on your skull and you can move to the back of your skull and the back of your neck. So it's a bit like rain. I always think this the sort of drumming of fingers on the skull. And then from here, we come down to a bit of sort of slapping our hands on our shoulders. And then starting to slap our hands. So I'm slapping one hand up and down one arm. And this is, this is what really, I don't know, really cheered me up yesterday because I think it takes you out of being stuck in your head and to really feeling the, the, your skin, your external boundaries. So do that on both arms, slapping your hands up and down your arms. You can obviously make it as um, gentle or as <laughs> slappy as you like. And then from there, we come on to these sort of um, like Tarzan type movements where we're slapping on our chest. That's got a nice sort of echo to it, good. And then starting to slap down the sides of your body. So you can slap sort of, yeah, down the sides of the rib cage, down to the sides of the pelvis and up and down a few times. Good. And we can do a little bit of circling of one hand on our belly. So at this point, I think we don't really want to slap my belly. I just want to sort of circle and be quite kind. That's it, quite kind and gentle to the belly. And then when we do this funny one, if you remember this one we've done before, where you wrap your fingers around your thumbs and you've got these fists of your hands and you sort of swing them to punch your buttocks. And that again, yeah, can... <laughs> Depending on what you've been doing, I think I've been doing a bit of running this week, I can feel rather nice. And then from here, we're going to start to go into a forward bend by slapping our hands all around our legs. So onto our thighs, the fronts, the insides, the sides, the backs, and carry on going. So then we start to slap our lower legs, our calves, our shins. You can slap or tap down onto your feet. And once you've sort of done all of your legs, you then start to move back up again. So moving back up through your legs, slapping and tapping. So we come back upright, that's it. We can revisit the fingers wrapped around the thumbs, sort of swinging our hands onto our buttocks. Revisit that one if you like. We can revisit a nice gentle hand circling on our belly. We can 
slap up the sides of our body. So if nothing else, hopefully this is waking you up a bit on a Friday morning. Good, so slapping up and down. We've got the slapping the hands on the chest. Come this time to slapping on your arms. Just pay a bit of attention to your shoulders because it can feel really nice to be slapping onto the tops and the back of your shoulders, as well as down each arm, up and down each arm. Okay. And so we eventually finish back with drumming our fingers on our head. So this feeling of rain on our head, which we'll be taking into another movement. So we're coming back now to, to um, coming back, we're coming to another focus with our water theme. And we're going to do this exercise where you imagine that you're standing under a waterfall. So I'm going to read, we're going to do this twice. I'm going to read it out to you and um, just, yeah, follow the words. So this is called Waterfall Hang. So start with your feet just a little distance apart. And it says, let your head drop slowly forwards. Feel its weight pull you downwards. Your head, shoulders, arms, until your upper body hangs down towards the ground. Bend your knee all the way down and forward end. And exhale deeply. Imagine a waterfall running down your back. Feel your spine lengthen and your head loosen. Then slowly from the base of your spine, Unfold upwards through the water, head up last, to stand in the down rush of the waterfall. And I always like to, when I come back up here, to come back to that drumming my fingers on my head. And so just if you have ever, in any country, <laughs> when we were allowed to travel, been under a waterfall, you can maybe, you know, come back to some of those memories. We'll do it one more time. So yes, if there's a memory of, being under a waterfall, you could bring that to mind. So one more time, let your head drop slowly forwards. Feel its weight pull you downwards. Your head, shoulders and arms until your upper body hangs down towards the ground. And so bending your knees as much as you like. Exhale deeply. <sighs> Imagine a waterfall running down your back. Feel your spine lengthen and your head loosen. Then slowly from the base of your spine, unfold upwards through the water, head up last, to stand in the down rush of the waterfall. And again, if you like, you can come sort of drumming your fingers on your head. And then we're going to take that, I suppose, that flow of the waterfall into a sequence. And I'd like you in this sequence to be as sort of, I suppose, as fluid and um, flowing as you like. So we're going to be coming down into a forward bend and we'll do all those sort of weeping willow movements and then on into dog pose. We're going to repeat the same sequence three times to just maybe try and get into that flow of it. So be at the back of your mat, bring your hands into prayer pose in front of you. And as you exhale, take your arms down and then up. And I was thinking at this point, you can just sort of sway a little bit and reach into your arms and um, if anyone's seen that lovely film on Netflix, My Octopus Teacher and the sort of kelp forests, that's what I was imagining here. And then from that, you can fall down into your forward bend, flow down into your forward bend. And then those sort of side to side weeping willow movements. Again, this can be very much like that sort of movement of seaweed in the tide. And then from that forward bend, when you're ready, walk in your hands forwards into dog pose. And in dog pose, have two or three breaths. And here, I like to come back to that 
image or that feeling, that sort of imaginary imagining of the waterfall sliding down my back, a sort of wash of water from my pelvis down, my back, the back of my neck over my head. And from dog pose, then coming onto hands and knees for a few cycles of cat. And just see how, how does cat feel now? We'll be coming in and out of it a few times. So a few times rounding your back, dipping your spine. And then tuck your toes under, round your back to the ceiling and rock your hips back over your heels. And then stay back with your pelvis and walk your hands a little bit further forwards on the floor. So we're going to move into face up dog as we exhale. But again, just keep, you know, maybe don't feel that you have to hold it. You can just come into face up dog. How does that feel? Untuck your toes and then from face up dog, rock all the way back into child pose or into kneeling if you prefer for a breath or two. And then from child pose, you're going to slide your hands forwards on the floor. So your forehead's on the floor. You slide your hands forward so your elbows come off the floor. And then come up onto hands and knees. And it's going to be a long hands and knees. So you then can again rock forwards without the rounding into face up dog one more time. Good. And then start to rock back. Tuck your toes under again. And this time you're going to walk your hands in towards your knees. Pick your knees up off the floor. So you come up onto the balls of your feet, yeah? And you can do a little bit of rocking here. So in a moment from here, we're going to come into our forward bend again. We can do those sort of sweeping, weeping willow, seaweedy type movements, and then rolling up into standing. So you can send your heels down to the floor, your sit bones up to the ceiling, come into your forward bend. You can be a bit sort of wavy here if you like. You don't have to be. And then to come up into standing, touching the backs of your hands together, trailing your hands up the front of your body. And again, when you reach your arms up to the ceiling, you might just sort of sway or, you know, again, we're thinking about that sort of kelp, <laughs> kelp forest. Good. And then releasing your arms, beautiful. And we're going to do that whole sequence two more times. So, and we're just to try and sort of find this flow of it. So hands in prayer pose in front of you, letting the breath come in as you exhale, take your arms down and then up a little bit of flowing here. And then you can imagine it's your waterfall again, down your back into your forward bend. And then sweeping your fingers and your arms side to side around your legs. And then on into dog pose. And in dog pose, we can again come back to that image of the waterfall, the sort of wash of water across the back of our body. And from dog pose down onto hands and knees for a few cycles of cat when you're ready. So each time we come back into cat pose, and this is what I was thinking about yesterday, is maybe it starts to feel a bit more fluid. If we were feeling a bit tight around the lower back, perhaps things start to flow a bit more easily. From cat pose, you're going to tuck your toes under. You're going to round your back to the ceiling, stay rounded, rock your hips back over your heels. And then walk your hands forwards a bit on the floor. Let a breath come in and then staying rounded, traveling forwards, but looking back towards your pelvis, keeping your back rounded as you move into face up dog. And then again, untucking your toes, that's it, opening into face up dog for a breath. And then rock back into child pose. This is where you can have a little moment of quiet a breath or two in child. Or of course, kneeling if you prefer, but I think it would be a breath or two in child. And then let your arms slide forward so your elbows come off the ground, your forehead's still there. 
and then start to come forwards onto hands and knees and carry on rocking forwards so you're coming back into face up dog again good and then rocking back tucking your toes under walking your hands into your knees your knees come off the floor we're back in this way you might just rock here a little bit you might this time maybe spread your toes out just do a little bit of rocking on the balls of your feet and then once more we'll be coming into forward bend so sending the heels down the sit bones up arrive in your forward bend if you want to do the sort of sweeping movements with your arms we're just letting the arms feel very sort of loose and free. Touching the backs of the hands together, rolling up into standing as you exhale, arms straight up the front of your body towards the ceiling and a bit of sort of swaying, swaying seaweedy movements. And then the arms can come out in a big circle. So we'll do this one more time, the sequence, and you can of course move at your own pace if you want to, this is feeling more familiar. So hands in prayer pose, let a breath come in, exhale, take the arms down and then up, bit of swaying, a bit of reaching through your arms, and then this feeling of coming into our waterfall hang, Tum spine tumbling forwards, again sweeping the arms around as much as you like. And then walking on into dog pose. Seeing how this dog pose feels maybe as we've come in and out of dog a few times. How does your breathing feel in dog? The sort of flow of your breath through your body. And then on to hands and knees. And your cat movements, rounding and dipping your spine. So this is our last little period of cat. So again, how do these movements feel? Do we feel any more fluid than we did in the first cat poses? So tuck your toes under, round your back to the ceiling, look back behind you, stay rounded, rock your hips back over your heels. Slide, walk your hands forwards a little bit on the floor, that's it. Let the breath come in and as you exhale, travelling forwards with that rounded back. Untucking your toes, good, into face up dog. And then rocking your hips back over your heels, your feet are flat on the floor, coming into dog pose, no, sorry, child pose for a couple of breaths. Just enjoying that moment of rest, the weight of your body settled on the ground. And then again, sliding your hands forwards, your elbows come off the ground, your forehead stays down, and starting to bring your weight forwards again leaning into your arms, this sort of rocking forwards into face up dog. Good. Very nice, rocking your weight back, tucking your toes under, walking the hands in towards your knees, coming up onto the balls of your feet. A little bit of rocking here if you like, and then one last time we're coming into our forward bend. We can when you arrive in this forward bend, how does it feel? Anchoring your heels into the ground. Can your upper body, your arms in particular, feel very fluid and loose and free? And then exhaling, sinking into your heels, touching the backs of your hands together, rolling up into standing. And one last time, if you like, a bit of sort of swaying. <sighs> And then we're going to come to settle in standing. I just have to turn my heating off because I've got completely overheated. Um, we're going to come to settle in standing and we're going to think about a different, a different sort of water, still water. So I would like you to settle. You could have a hand on your belly and a hand on your chest. You could close your eyes. So we're coming to one of these Thich Nhat Hanh, um, focuses for our in and out breath. 
which may you may remember from a while ago. So breathing in, I see myself as still water. Breathing out, I reflect all that is. So just see how that feels to repeat that to yourself as you breathe in. I see myself as still water. As I breathe out, I reflect all that is. Again, it might bring, for me, it brings back sort of memories of beautiful mountain lakes, the very, very clear, and you see the reflection of the sky and the peaks in the water. So again, if you've got any memories of, of lakes, of sort of still, clear, reflective water. And from this point of stillness, we're going to see how does it feel then to come into a very simple standing balance. So you're going to be taking your weight onto one foot and the other foot's going to come to stand on top of that foot. So it is very quiet and simple and you can bring your hands into prayer pose in front of you at your breastbone. And you can then come back to that little focus, breathing in still water, breathing out, reflecting. Again, if you have a memory of a lake, you could be visualizing. There's loads of beautiful lakes around you, obviously, being in the Lake District. Very nice. Come back down just very quietly and try the same thing on the other side. So bringing your weight onto your other foot. Stand the foot you were just standing on on that foot. And bring your hands into prayer pose, if you like. You could just let your arms hang. And again, see if you can connect with the feeling of the flow of your breath. And adding those images and words to your breathing. Breathing in, still water. Breathing out, reflecting. Come down, have a little shake out. What I'd like us to do now is to do some foot exercises. Just really to link up with and follow on from what we've been doing quite a lot of the last week or two. And then we'll come back into a balance and you can have a little bit of a choice of a balance there. So choose one foot to work with. We're going to do all of these exercises on one foot and then move on to the other. So the first thing you're going to do is roll onto the outer edge of this foot, of the foot, your chosen foot. So this one feels really good for the ankle as well. But obviously don't push it if your ankle is, you know, a bit tight. So rolling onto the outer edge of the foot and then bringing your foot back to the floor, the sole, the sole of the foot, and a couple more times. And seeing how that feels. And then we're going to do the one where we bring our foot forward and we start to tap our foot on the floor. So we did this one last week, I think, and we can tap in a little bit of a semicircle, quarter circle. And it's a bit like all those sort of slapping and tapping things we were doing earlier. It just really helps to bring our awareness to our foot. Then bring your foot back under, under your pelvis and come up onto the ball of that foot. And now what you're trying to do is roll your weight from the base of your big toe across the whole of your foot to the the whole of the ball of your foot to the base of your little toe. And so for me, this really starts to get into some sort of tight, knotty places around the base of my big toe. So that's just, just a couple more times rolling across the ball of the foot. Seeing if you can, yeah, how that feels good. And then finally, before we move on to the other foot, just come back to the first movement where you're rolling onto the outer edge of your foot and see how that feels. Very nice. And then we'll do all the same movements on the other foot. So come onto foot two and roll onto the outer edge of the foot. And I always think, oh my goodness, it feels really stiff. I can't 
going to think, is this my stiffer foot? Or, yeah, so just see how does it feel to roll onto the outer edge of that foot a few times, and then bringing the whole of your foot back to the floor. And then we'll take the foot forwards, we'll do a bit of tapping, up and down, a bit out to the side if you like. So just this feeling of the sole of the feet foot tapping on the floor. Hopefully that just takes all our attention down there. Next one, bring the foot back under your pelvis and this rolling across the ball of the foot. So really can we find some flexibility through the ball of the foot? We're trying to almost imagine those sort of individual um, bones there, you know, one for each, one for each toe. Good. And then finally, come back to rolling a few times to the outer edge of that foot. And just see how that feels. Okay, so I was going to suggest what I'd like you to do now is think about a balance. I'd say an upright one rather than one we're tipping forwards. An upright balance where you, where you feel that you can be quite steady or something quite familiar. So I was going to suggest tree pose. And you could obviously have your foot in any of these places. Or I was going to suggest this sort of um, this stalk, this version of dancer where we're not tipping forwards. So I think there might be something else. So if there's something else you prefer, uh, eagle legs. <laughs> I don't know if anyone would choose that. Yeah, so choose a balance and then make your way into it. And then we'll come back to our still water and reflecting and just see if those that focus see how it is in our balance so you can yeah find a place where you can settle connect with your breathing and then starting to introduce those words and images so breathing in i see myself as still water Breathing out, I reflect all that is. Again, you can obviously change, try some different arm positions if you like. Breathing in, I see myself as still water. Breathing out, I reflect all that is. Maybe one more time. And again, you can hold in your mind, if you like, that the image of a lake that you may be familiar with. Breathing in still water, breathing out reflecting. Yes, and then come down, have a little shake out and we'll try the other side. And I think this, this idea of reflecting is so interesting because I think it's so easy, I find to be really you know stuck inside my head. Um, and somehow this notion of reflecting just really helps me to feel more connected with what's around me. So make your way onto the second side of your balance. Finding a place where you can settle. And of course, use a wall if that's helpful. You know, if you're coming onto your more wobbly side and having your fingers on a wall or a sofa would help, then by all means do that. So how does it feel on the second side to come to breathing in? I see myself as still water. Breathing out, I reflect all that is. Breathing in, still water. Breathing out, reflecting. Yes, and any, any arm variations you want to do. Breathing in, still water. Breathing out, reflecting. Good, yes, and do come down and have a little shake out. So we're gonna we're gonna make our way down to the ground and we're going to do a little bit more of this sort of contrast between fluid movement and then the sort of still water. So what I'd like you to do is come down through a forward bend and a squat and on into cobbler pose. So sort of in 
in your own time. And again, if, you, if being in a squat is helpful for your lower back, then by all means, stay there. So coming into your forward bend, you can obviously do whatever you like in your forward bend. Um, if you want to be in your squat for a little bit, doesn't matter if your heels come up, if that feels good for your lower back, then be there. And then obviously sort of using your hands behind you to sort of lower yourself down, your bottom down onto the floor so you can safely sit down into cobbler pose. Good. So from cobbler pose, we're going to go on into pinwheel and we're going to think about doing these sort of fluid movements in pinwheel. So let one knee come on top of the other knee and let your top leg slide back. So the first thing we can do is our circling in pinwheel. And I was just thinking in this that actually if we think about being fluid here, then, you know, maybe and that, does, that does possibly change how we're moving. Can we, you know, just keeping the arms really soft and flowy and we can go lower. Yeah. I, I was interested just by having that notion of being fluid here, that I was moving in a different way. A little bit of, yeah, a little bit more circling in your pinwheel. And then we're going to come to some sort of the pinwheel twists. So you're going to come and lean on. So this knee that's going out to the side, you're going to come and lean on that arm and hand. And again, as you start to move in these, so first of all, we're just starting to sort of swing our arm from our back foot round to that supporting hand, letting the pelvis come along. So I was thinking as you move in this, again, if we've got this idea of being fluid, then the twist maybe feels a bit looser and freer. You can start to slap your hand onto the back of your shoulder and, you know, I'm not sure <laughs> the slapping and the fluidity. Good. And then from here, we can bring the hand onto the back of the shoulder. We can keep it there. We can sink into our arm, let our pelvis come up. And these sort of movements where we're reaching up towards the ceiling and again, sort of reaching fluid, we can think about those seaweedy movements and coming down again. And we'll repeat that a few times. So the arm can swing around, it can slap onto our shoulder, we lean into our arm, our pelvis comes up and then it's the sort of growing up to the ceiling but keeping it very fluid today, good. So if we think about best to be like water, do not, not contend. So not pushing ourselves but trying to find this sort of fluid pathway through the movement. And when I do it one more time if you like. And when I think about that, that quote from the Tao Te Ching, I often think about how, I suppose little streams I know in North Wales and how they always, the water always finds a way through. The, you know, <laughs> I try and make a sort of dam of rocks with my children. The water always finds its way through without, yeah, trickling through. When you've done that three or four times, then come down into your pinwheel forward bend and just a couple of quiet breaths. Settling here, connecting with the flow of your breath, feeling the flow of your breath through your body. Very nice, that's beautiful, lovely view. So even this sense when we're quiet, there's this internal flow of our breath. And of course we know there's all the internal flows of everything else that's moving around within us. And then you can walk your hands in towards you. Let's um, slide the top knee back. And just, let's just see, have a, a few little movements in cobbler pose before we do the other side. So, and I was, yeah, how could you move in cobbler that feels fluid? For me, it doesn't feel the most fluid of places to be. But can you do a little bit of circling or swaying in cobbler pose? You might do rocking. Sometimes that feels a bit, um, a bit bumpy, a bit too rocky. 
there's obviously these sort of side lengthening movements which might feel nice in cobbler pose so yeah can we have a few breaths in cobbler pose and, and keep this sense of movement of fluidity that's good that's good that's going to be different for every each one of us and then from cobbler pose we'll move on to side two of pinwheel and do a bit more sort of rocking so let your knee we're going the other way now stack your knees up slide your top leg back and again come back to these circling movements and think about how we can keep the upper body quite soft and fluid maybe using our arms in a different way this sort of notion of I don't know, seaweed just thinking how lucky we are um, you've got all the wonderful lake stuff in the lake district we've got the sea here in brighton how lucky we all are to be living near water and when you're ready you can come to lean on your so the knee that's going outside lean on that arm and just start these turning movements so we're drawing a bit like we did on our backs at the beginning of class when we're doing that twist we're using our arm in a sort of soft fluid way to start turning ourselves towards our standing hand and the pelvis is moving too so in this twist unlike other twists we're letting our pelvis move so as your body as you turn towards your supporting arm this sort of buttock is coming off the floor we can then be yes slapping our hand onto the back of our shoulder and then we can be keeping our hands on the back of the shoulder. How does it feel to sink into the arm, to let the pelvis grow up, to sort of float your arm up to the ceiling, and then to come back down. And as we did on side two, just being really aware of this sort of be best to be like water and not contending. So like a stream, like a trickle of water always finds its way through the rocks sort of the easiest route do this one more time if you like and then your pinwheel forward bend beautiful it looks amazing yeah really lovely everyone good and then folding down into your pinwheel forward bend, having a few breaths there. So the body settles and quietens and we may become more aware of the sort of internal movement, the flow of our breath within us. And I was thinking there's all these different levels of movement within us. There's obviously this, you know, the blood, you know, all the chemicals, everything that moves around within our body. There's also a sense of thoughts, feelings, sensations, all of that traveling around within us. When you come up from your pinwheel forward bend, you can lean back on your arms and give your legs a little lengthen out. Now, what we're going to do is I want us to come back to the still water reflecting in a comfortable sitting position. So you're going to choose the sitting position that's most comfortable for you. So it could be that you sit with your back against, so particularly if you'd like to sit with your legs long and wide, you could have your back against a sofa or a wall, or you could sit cross legs like this, you could sit cross-legged on a cushion, or you could kneel. So, and what we're going to do is when we've, yeah, so set, find, a, find a sitting position. We're not gonna be here long. And when you've found your sitting position, you're gonna do a little bit of rocking or swaying. So obviously if you've got the wall behind you, <laughs> that restricts, you know, you can do a bit sideways. So rocking, swaying, circling. So we'll start off with this fluid movement and then little by little we're making movements smaller and smaller. 
and we'll settle in standing, so in sitting, sorry, and we'll come to this sort of quiet focus on yeah. So settle either with your palms, and with your hands resting on your thighs, palms up or down. There's something I feel about the palms facing upwards that reminds me of that reflecting, reflecting all that is, but be comfortable. Close your eyes if you like and bring your attention to your breathing. Just feeling the flow of your breath through your body. And starting to introduce those words and images. So breathing in, I see myself as still water. Breathing out, I reflect all that is. Breathing in, still water. Breathing out, reflecting. Stay with that focus for maybe three or four more cycles of breath and I will ring the singing bowl when we let go. So just the breath comes in still water, the breath leaves reflecting. I'm picturing if you like a beautiful lake We're going to finish lying down and we'll come to back to the Tao Te Ching quote and the, the whole of it because we only had part of it at the beginning. So yes, blankets, anything you need to make yourselves warm and cosy at this point. And yeah settling down. So you can lie however you like, knees bent or legs long. And again, once you've settled down, connecting with the flow of your breath in your body. So again, our body is quiet, but we're aware of that inner movement. Best to be like water, which benefits the 10,000 things and does not contend. It pulls where humans disdain to dwell, close to the Tao. Live in a good place. Keep your mind deep. Treat others well. Stand by your word. Make fair rules. Do the right thing. Work when it's time. Only do not contend and you will not go wrong. Can I just read the first bit of this again? Best to be like water, 
which benefits the 10,000 things and does not contend. It pulls where humans disdain to dwell, close to the Tao. Just give yourself maybe another minute or so, lying quietly, feeling the flow of your breath through your body. But maybe also taking this opportunity to cast your mind back through the class and any of those images we, you experience perhaps of being an, under a waterfall or a memory of seeing a lake perhaps in the mountains. And I was just thinking how in this, these times where we can't go <laughs> anywhere, that um, to allow our mind to have this sense of expansion is, is nourishing in itself. These, these um, experiences of, yeah, of nature. So thank you very much, everyone. Um, 